Hi, this is Dan Ballard, retired electronics engineer, sitting on the front deck of my houseboat again. I got a surprise coming up in a few minutes. The last video I made, I talked about this article, Can Excel Simulations Be Trusted? And I hope you've read the article. If you haven't, it's available on LinkedIn. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to connect to me or nothing. You can just go there and read these articles. So, can Excel simulations be trusted? Google search for it and you'll find it. So in that last video, I showed you one of the really cool things I did. I clipped a sine wave on the Applicos on the top and on the bottom. Figured out using my Excel spreadsheet what the angle was where I clipped it. And that was at 242.8473539 degrees. Now, that's the angle where I clipped it, and nobody on the planet can tell you what the angle is. Now, I also simulated the distortion at the top peak, and I captured it, I captured the wave, and then I simulated the top peak, and that was at 62.646.4513 degrees. Now, in this article, those were two-tenths of a degree apart. In that, or in that article, um, I also simulated another one, and I simulated a clipping, and here's the clipping, it's pretty cool, and okay. yeah, there it is, it's very loud, I hope you can hear me, typically these guys push um, gravel barges, so they take like 10 or 20 gravel trucks off the road, but Renee is today not pushing the gravel bar. I don't know what she did. But she'll go by and she'll make a big wake and we'll see how good the image stabilization works on this camera. Okay, so I clipped the wave in Excel, not using the applicants. I clipped the wave in Excel and I got this spectrum. And using Excel, I use a successive approximation technique to figure out exactly what the angle was where it was clipping. And that was at 62.4476596 degrees. Now, that is only two tenths of a degree away from 62.646.4513 degrees. So, the negative peak was clipping at the reciprocal angle, 242.8473539 degrees. The cool thing is, you can see it in the spectrum very clearly. Now in the first one, where I clipped a negative peak, you can see that the ninth and 10th harmonic are a little bit offset. The ninth harmonic is taller than the 10th harmonic. When I clip at the top peak, it turned out that I was clipping at 62.6464513 degrees, this ninth and 10th harmonic were identical, more or less. They were really close. And what that means is, believe it or not, the Buller harmonic solution does this humping thing. And that's, I mean, that's a law of physics. That is a law of physics. That's like Newton sitting under an apple tree getting hit on the head by an apple. When the ninth and 10th harmonic are identical in amplitude, that means that the, the cosine wave that forms the Buller harmonic solution fell right in the middle. It fell right in between them. Now, it wasn't that close. It was really, really close, but it's like, remember that the, the, the Buller harmonic solution is not related to the harmonics at all. It's related to the phase angle, the phase angle where the distortion happens. That's what is important. And so where that thing falls, where that cosine wave falls to zero, is exaggerated because we're looking at it in a logarithmic plot. That's the dB plot. When I did that, the 62.4476596 degree plot, the um, amplitude of the ninth harmonic is actually lower than the tenth harmonic. Now what that means is that that cosine wave fell to zero 
before the tenth harmonic, somewhere be before the middle of the ninth and tenth harmonic. So it fell a little bit to that side. So here's the thing. Remember, this is an important thing whether you know the full harmonic solution or not. The closer you get to 90 degrees, the fewer humps you have. Okay? The closer you get to 90 degrees, the fewer humps you have. When I clip at, let's talk about the reciprocal angle, 62.847 degrees. That's closer to 90 degrees than either of the other two. The closer you get to 90 degrees, the fewer humps you have. If you clip at exactly 90 degrees, and it's very difficult to do that, but I did it in my book, Distortion. If you clip at exactly 90 degrees, you get no humps at all. It's absolutely flat. It's just like having an impulse in there. And the reason for that is really simple. The whole point of the humps is so that the god of harmonics can create two distortions in the wave. Two. Okay? But if you go at exactly 90 degrees or exactly at 270 degrees, it only has to create one. And so it doesn't need the humping. That's why it's absolutely flat. Okay? So the closer you get to 90 degrees, the fewer humps you have. Now that's the case with 242.847.3539 degrees. Again, the reciprocal angle is 62.847.3539 degrees. It's closer to 90 degrees than the top peak, which was at 62.646.4513 degrees, and closer than my other example, at 62.447659.6 degrees. The further you get from 90 degrees, the more humps you have. And what that means is that that dip gets closer to bin zero, gets closer to the first harmonic. And so if you go closer and closer to 90 degrees, you have fewer and fewer humps for a particular sample rate. Anyway. Um, there's the article. Read it if you like. Can Excel simulations be trusted? Oh, I did want to mention one other thing. In this article, I, I come across as pretty bitter about being fired from Applicos. Applicos, I, I love their testers. Uh, Carl Chapman, he was a nice enough guy, but he like, he doesn't get me. And it's okay, you don't have to get me. Um, and so he, that's why they fired me. He didn't get me. He didn't understand it. Um, but that doesn't, Car Chapman doesn't own the company anymore anyway. And um, somebody else does. And whether I like cars or not, has nothing to do with it. The Apple Coast tester is a great tester. I'm not getting paid by Apple Coast. I don't expect to ever work for them again. Um, you need to know how things work. And you can do that with an Apple Coast, you can do that with Teradyne, you can do that with a Credence, you can do that with an STS-3000, even the ASL-3000. The ASL-3000 could do FFTs and stuff. So if you can do any, any tester, the LTX Fusion, any tester that can do coherent sampling, if you're using a scope or a spectrum analyzer, fuck you, you know. Those don't do it. They're not coherent. And Tony says, oh, coherent, like in a coherent argument. No. Coherent as in read about it online. There's a lot of places you can find out about coherent sampling. And I used to teach coherent sampling, and I'm really not prepared to do it. I'm just not. So take a look at the article. Look for coherent sampling. Ignore anybody who's talking about spectrum analyzers or scopes. Remember a scope on a scope, an FFT is just an approximation. That's never been true. The FFT is, has never been an approximation. The FFT is an approximation if you window it, if you window the wave first, and then it's an approximation. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, the Buller Harmonic Solution, it's pretty easy to figure out. The closer you get to 90 degrees, the fewer humps you have. If you're exactly at 90, 
get zero, zero humps, no humps at all. And that's just the way it is. The further you get from 90 degrees, the more humps you get. And that's, that's my formula. That's my formula. I worked it out. You can get a look at it by buying the book, Distortion or Harmonics or More on Harmonics for Morons. I don't give it away because I want to have something in the bank so my grandchildren can sue the crap out of somebody and get filthy rich if they publish it. Now, I tried publishing stuff in Wikipedia. They wouldn't have any of it. So fine, Wikipedia, fuck you. Anyway, so once again, from the river, this is Dan Bullard. See ya. <laughs>